Well, today is National Gourmet Coffee Day, and as you enjoy a cup of your favorite fancy coffee, have you ever thought about why we come together over it's coffee? Awesome. Rafi Anonian joins us to help answer that because question. Welcome, as always. Thank you, thank you. I even brought some Missouri-made coffees here. All you know, right. The show me, of course, for the show me state, which makes sense, or folklore, which sounds very Missouri, fitting for Missouri for me, you know what I mean, in this region. Okay, so we all are drinking our coffee right now, probably watching this. Why is it such a big deal here? Because you think about the Boston Tea Party, for example, yeah. right? We dump the tea into the sea. Right? <laughs> so it's a big deal in the U.S. because that is one of those moments where we start to change our taste from tea mm -hmm. over to coffee. You think about its interconnection to the American Revolution. So think about the that's Stamp the Act thing. crisis, okay, so you know, that's to, that right, starts so a series of protests that goes on for a decade that leads to the American years. Revolution. A lot of those happened inside of coffee houses in the U.S., especially, of course, on the East Coast, right? So there, was, there were places for exchange of news. There were places that were egalitarian, where the common person could engage with politics. And then, of course, that's where a lot of the stuff, the, the protests were signed, news would spread, broadsides would be uh, you know, posted up on the wall, so to speak. That's right. The coffee houses. That's right. That's right. Exactly. That's right. It's just like... Go to the coffee catch up with your girlfriend. Yes, but you still think about it. It's still like, that's right, exactly, a business meeting. But think about those revolutionary things that are happening as a business meeting of sorts, right? It's the political business of the day. So it is still a place where you gather to exchange information. So the shift from tea to coffee, us sort of rebelling against England, and the, the sort of hotbed of the coffee houses during the revolution is what it makes it so popular. Now, it goes beyond that, too. In the American Civil War, for example, it's also you have coffee being given as part of the rations to help soldiers keep marching because they have to march 23 the miles a day. Right? The caffeine, like, exactly. Not really me, not That's not right. Or how about out west, you know, with the, uh, go, you have the uh, gold asleep, miners that are going out. Suddenly... Folger's got to start there. James Folger, that's how he got started. <sighs> Or you think about folks that are, you know, uh, uh, cowboys, right? That are trying to stay up all hours, trying to keep up with their animals, you know? And even Teddy Roosevelt was a big coffee drinker, so even presidential like influence there, too. There's multiple things that happen in the generations after the revolution that also make a big deal here. I love that. Well, thank you so much for yes. spreading your knowledge. We love having you. Enjoy your coffee and stick around because we have more Yeah, but you can't be like, all right, well, that's that.